Hello fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of August 2nd, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a phenomenal and remarkable astrological week without a doubt. And it really is so much about this powerful full moon that is going to be taking place. Now the full moon will perfect right around Monday or Tuesday, depending on where you are on the planet. However, just a day before, as we begin the week on Sunday, we are going to have the sun speaking with Uranus in a conversation of tension. And this is essentially setting up this larger energy. The sun has to do with who we know ourselves to be at our very core. It is how it is and where it is we feel lighter, we feel illuminated, we feel like we shine. Now Uranus is an energy of surprise, of shock, and especially when it is speaking to another planet in an aspect that astrologers call a square. It is an aspect of tension and motivation. It brings with it that much more an energy of surprise and unexpected feelings and unexpected happenings. And so this energy in and of itself, given that the sun is in the sign of Leo, having to do with confidence and putting yourself out there, being on a bigger stage, knowing that you're worthy of shining. Well, we may see some particularly erratic examples of this desire for attention, but it is the moon and in particular the full moon that is felt more than just about any other celestial phenomenon because it is an energy that is emotional. We feel it within uh, as an emotional energy. We feel it rising just like the full moon grows. And it is on the surface. That is what full moons represent. What is most on the surface? What are we feeling most? Now the full moon will be setting up a larger configuration called a T-square, which is like a square but magnified that much more because it is the full moon that is standing across the sun but also in a square configuration. So this larger configuration brings that much more tension, but also that much more motivation. Now I like to see uh, or conceive of squares as an aspect that says, I'll show you, or I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna prove you wrong. Squares tend to represent motivation that arises from that place and with that attitude. Now you add to it the nature of the planets involved, a full moon in the sign of Aquarius, a sign that is ruled by Uranus. So Uranus and Aquarius already have this natural connection to them. It is Aquarius as an energy I've spoken about quite a bit because I uh, am fascinated at how we are on the precipice of the age of Aquarius, but it is this energy that speaks to at once the individual, but also the collective. At once it says that you are free to be you, however that is, but it is also one that roots that assertion in a spirit of equality. It is concerned for others, it is humanitarian, but it is also rebellious at the same time. And so we have the planet of unexpected rebellion of over-the-top shows and demonstrations and exertions and sometimes shocking events when we have a square speaking to a full moon in a t-square with precision a tight aspect which means the orb is small for those of you who are students of astrology you understand that there are some conversations that have a wider orb, which means they're not as precise. They're not gonna be as felt as a core part of the energy, but this is a tight orb. This is precise. And we are going to have this full moon speaking with Uranus. It's almost mathematical. It seems like one plus one equals two. You have the planet of disruption, the planet of exertion, the planet of shock. Speaking with a full moon, having to do with collective efforts, having to do with individuals, and especially those who may be considered outcasts or on the fringes. Uranus has to do with mass media, reaching a whole lot of people, connecting with the masses. 
And then we have the sign of the rebel, of the spirit of equality, connecting in this way, connecting in tension. Well, it does look like a whole lot of us out there are going to be feeling the desire to express ourselves in bigger ways. With Leo and a son in Leo speaking with Uranus, perfecting that connection first, we may collectively see some famous examples of people acting in ways that were not expected, even in ways that feel shocking. But it is ultimately how that connects to some larger cause, some higher aim that's going to allow those actions to make sense in some way. And this can also be actions that ultimately resonate with masses of people, resonate with the collective. The key here to remember is that we ourselves as individuals may find ourselves responding to a moment, responding to an interaction in ways that we had not expected, perhaps stronger than anything we thought we were capable of bringing forward. At the same time, though, it is very possible that other people are reacting to us uh, in a way that is unexpected as well. And especially where it is that we're willing to put ourselves out there in some way, whether it is to be visible or whether it is to do something different or what is considered eccentric or eclectic. Well, those are the types of activities in particular that can evoke very strong reactions now. Now, it is also this Uranus Aquarius energy that is being highlighted here that speaks to uh, information reaching a lot of people very quickly. So I do think at the very least, we are going to see some very unusual ideas, uh, perhaps even ideas characterized as futuristic or highly scientific. Uh, these ideas reaching a whole lot of people very quickly as well. The way that we see when uh, certain things on the internet go viral, we may see some of that in a way that is, uh, has a newfound speed that hasn't been anticipated or the content is especially shocking as well or surprising as well. But here's the thing, under the light of the full moon, we are going to have Mercury standing across the sky from Saturn. Now this is a very interesting contrast to this full moon. Saturn is the ancient ruling planet, the traditional ruling planet of Aquarius. So it has that connection to Aquarian energy as it is. But it is Mercury now that is in the sign of Cancer. And Cancer has to do with our understanding of our people, our home, our country. Uh, when we talk about things like where we come from and understanding where we come from, we are evoking the Cancer vibration. And so we have here the planet of restriction and limitation, the planet of tradition, which is all the qualities that Saturn represents in contrast to, in opposition to, across the sky from a sense of our understanding of who it is that we are and what tradition it is that we are perpetuating versus the shoulders on which we stand. And so this is energy on a more surface level. It speaks to restriction. It speaks to power dynamics. It speaks to strong forces that in some way feel as if they are larger than oneself. It speaks to, through our dynamics, becoming aware of not only where it is that we may feel that there are some limitations right now, but it may also speak to our understanding of a more responsible or mature approach that may need to be taken. It can speak to delays or delayed gratification. It can show us how much further there is to go. And in particular, with Mercury, having spent an unusually long time in the sign of Cancer, Mercury has been in the sign of Cancer since late May. Normally, Mercury will spend some four weeks per sign per year. But of course, the retrograde turns that, flips that on its head. As we see recently, now that we are out of a Mercury retrograde season, and it is because of Mercury retrograde that Mercury spent so much time in the sign of Cancer. And it is now just before Mercury leaves the sign of Cancer 
that we are seeing more clearly and understanding more clearly the limits of how far it is we have come since late May. What it is that we have come to understand about ourselves and about where we come from, about what we consider a nation or our nation or our country. What does it mean to be a patriot? What is the extent of that? What are the limits of that? What does it mean to be a responsible person of your nation? And how do we really feel about it as part of our own personal journeys? Our answers will be highly individual, but it is going to be at this time that at the very least we're willing or able to see the different ways in which home and country and family can be interpreted and find, I hope, some middle ground. Oppositions can also speak to compromise and it may very well be the spirit of compromise and accepting some things that are less than ideal, but also being connected to something essential that may show up under this very sky in the first days of the week. Now, as we navigate towards the middle of the week, right in the middle of the week, we are going to have Mars speaking with Jupiter. Again, we have a square configuration here. Now, this is important for one really big reason, and that is that Mars is in shadow. This is the first really big alignment that Mars is making with a big power planet like Jupiter in particular. The nature of Jupiter is to expand what Whatever energy he reaches out to, whatever energy he touches, in this case the energy of Mars, having to do with the sacred masculine, having to do with our sense of autonomy and our ability to take action on our own behalf, to move ourselves where we'd like to go. Mars is also assertion, can be aggression, can be anger as well. Now you add this conversation of tension, this square configuration, this I'll show you, way of understanding the nature of the conversation itself with Jupiter and Jupiter being an expansive quality, bringing that to Mars. Well, we can see here that there are, again, going to be different ways that people are going to embrace this energy. For some people, it is going to be a heightened time of adrenaline, of being especially passionate or impassioned. Uh, and yes, it may also be a time when we are feeling a heightened sense of aggressiveness. Now it is about how we use it, of course. If it is that we use it towards a higher aim, Mars, when it is at its best and honoring the sacred masculine, it is coming from a place of self-knowledge. So when it is that we are in a space of self-knowledge, we know who we are, we understand our essential nature, which is always going to be a space of love and wisdom. And then we consciously choose our actions and move forward from that place, taking action on our own behalf, exercising our agency to be a force of change in our lives and positively in the lives of others. That is when we are honoring Mars in the higher sense. And that is a choice that we get to make. But of course, Mars can also be very instinctual. It can be impulsive as well. And this is going to be an energy we are going to have to be mindful of as part of our own individual journeys, where it is that our own impulsiveness is being heightened now, perhaps uh, feelings being blown out of proportion and lending themselves to very strong reactive ways of moving through the world. This is the adrenaline junkie on high, and there may be some people out there who are feeling very revved up on adrenaline right about now. It is a high of its own. There are lots of things that human beings have used along the way as we continue to learn about ourselves as human beings. We find ways to use different things to get high in some way. Adrenaline, yes, people get high off adrenaline. This is taking the adrenaline high really far. So it is going to be an energy we have to be careful of. In our individual journeys, of course, we should watch what is taking place, what feelings are being stirred now. As I spoke of in the Mars retrograde special horoscope, I will link to it in the description below. It is 
this time and this month in particular that is setting up our larger learning. This is the introduction of big energies to Mars that we will then learn how to manage and we will get a chance to develop the skill of honoring our Mars more deeply, understanding the sacred masculine energy within each of us. It was Carl Jung who said that every female has an inner animus, an inner masculine. Every male has an inner anima, an inner feminine uh, as part of the psyche. I think that it is so empowering and wonderful that we live in times now today uh, in our modern times where we get to understand gender differently and we get to understand our own sacred masculine energy, our own sacred feminine energy differently and we get to live more balanced lives, honoring the sacred masculine and feminine within each of us, regardless of how it is we identify on a level of our gender. It is Mars now, and this Mars retrograde season that is going to invite us to contemplate, to consider more deeply what it is and how it is that we are going to tap into that sacred masculine within. It was the Venus retrograde season that is now over, that was part of helping us to understand more deeply our own unique and individual sacred feminine energies. As we navigate later into the week, the energies do start to change in notable ways, in a way that I think a lot of us are really going to appreciate. On Thursday, Mercury will finally leave the sign of Cancer. As I said, Mercury's been in Cancer since late May, such an unusually long time. Now, as Mercury moves into the sign of Leo, more of us are gonna be interested in talking about and contemplating matters that are more enlightened or lighter in some way, because the energy of Cancer can be so emotional and that in and of itself can feel consequential. The energy of Leo, by contrast, it is heart-oriented, it is individual-oriented as well, but it is an energy that also reflects pleasure. It reflects happiness and joy, uh, leisurely activities, and even summer, right? It is Leo, the sign of Leo that takes place right in the middle of the summer. And so this is gonna bring with it some levity, and at least the things that we're willing to talk about, we're gonna be more willing to talk about lighter subjects and contemplate lighter subjects as well. Perhaps there'll be more celebrity talk, celebrity gossip that could be a lot of fun. We may hear some developments where it comes to royal families around the world uh, at this time and in the weeks ahead. And I'll have a lot more to say about that next week in particular because I do think as we get into next week, like late this week, early next week, there may be some very surprising news coming forward where it comes to what is happening with royal families around the world. But the great thing is now, because of the time we live in in the world, we're able to honor these energies and these archetypes within ourselves and wherever it is that we are ready to contemplate more deeply our own core, our own light, and how it is that we deserve to shine that, the unique ways that we're gonna shine that, where it is that we can feel like royalty in and of ourselves, it is gonna be Mercury that encourages that contemplation to take place. The really big news though, I just spoke a moment ago about Venus and the sacred feminine. Venus is gonna change signs. It finally is going to happen. Here we are, finally, right? It is gonna be at the very end of the week that Venus will officially leave the sign of Gemini. Now, just like with Mercury spending a few weeks per sign per year, about three to four weeks per sign per year, but Mercury having now about to finish off an unusually long time in a single sign, Venus too normally will spend about four weeks per sign per year. But of course, because of the retrograde season, it was way back in the first days of April that Venus entered the sign of Gemini. And now, as she gears up to finally leave the sign of Gemini after this unusually long time, all of us will feel the energy shift. Consider that as Mercury is leaving the sign of Cancer, Venus then will enter. And to me, this does suggest that all the contemplation, consideration, conversations, communications we had 
around matters of home and family and country and what that means to us, the very cerebral approach to something that can be very visceral, while that journey, that exploration, the work that we have done now with Venus entering this part of the sky just two days after Mercury has left, well, it does speak to us reaping some reward. It is Venus that has been conceptualized as uh, a benefic. Uh, the ancients called her the lower benefic, which means that Jupiter being the higher benefic brings big blessings and Venus being a lower benefic brings blessings as well, but maybe not as powerful blessings as Jupiter, but blessings nonetheless. And it is Venus now that will help us to reap some reward, some sense of ease, some sense of understanding. Venusian energy in and of itself is one that is gracious, that has that level of being able to connect with others, being able to take a softer, more loving approach overall. And I do think that Venus moving here is going to help us to, after spending an unusually long time, contemplating things on a level of mind and intellect, now we'll have those contemplations reach our heart and restore some sense of love for family, for country, for where it is that we come from. There is a perfection that is always playing out and everybody out there in the world, I had this appreciation a few years back when I was traveling extensively. There's not a lot of traveling happening right about now, as we know, but that's okay. We are in the great pause. We still are, even though we're starting to open up a little bit. My traveling soul will find an outlet once again. But it was while I was traveling that I had this realization that every country has a national anthem. Every country has some way of affirming that they are the best, that they're really good, that they should feel good about themselves. It's sort of like this human need that we have, a way to connect with each other, but to also feel good about ourselves, this desire to pump ourselves up, but also uh, to feel a sense of commonality, but also choosing whom it is we feel commonality with. Uh, it is part of the world that we have created. and. In this, it, there is this universal sense of understanding. Now imagine love in that journey. Imagine love and ease and gentleness in that process. And so this in and of itself does say that there may very well feel like there's a heightened desire for love right where we are. At home, yes. And however it is that we understand home, however expansively that is, love can be there. What I love about this week for us, I love how things are changing. Look, I know there's tension. There's a bit of a wild ride at some points, especially to the early mid parts of the week. However, by the time we get to the late part of the week, very likely we will be thinking about things differently. We will be feeling different where it is that we find ease and pleasure and joy may start to shift gears as well. And these are the personal planets. When we look at Mercury, we look at Venus, these are considered the personal planets. We feel them more personally and more individually. And so as part of our individual journeys, yeah, more of us are going to feel like something has changed and chances are changed for the better. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, thumbs up. It means so much. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded, exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, exclusive live events, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Synchronicity University, the autumn session is around the corner. I'm really looking forward to sharing an incredible journey with you. And in particular, the very popular tarot journey. Thank you so much to all the people who have signed up. Higher numbers have signed up more quickly than in the past, and that tells me how much desire there is, enthusiasm there is, for the four tarot classes that are gonna be featured in part one and two of the autumn session. 
coming up and beginning in September. So four classes on tarot. If you want to understand something about my approach to the tarot, check out my video, pick a card for August uh, that shows you how it is that I connect astrology to tarot because these classes are tarot for astrologers. Um, it is also going to be two classes on Lilith, the asteroid two classes on the moon, two classes on Mercury. And of course, I always have these uh, open bonus Q&A classes as well, where you can ask follow-up questions. And it tends to be a wonderful journey that we take together, whether it is that you can join us live, whether you catch it on the download, on the replay, you would be very welcome to join us. And the really big news is, of course, if you sign up before August 21st or August 31st it is, if you sign up in August, as early as possible in August, uh, you will get to choose your own tuition rate as low as just $5 a class. Uh, that is an incredible value to get astrology classes and tarot classes as well for that lower rate. So you get to choose your tuition rate as low as $5 a class if you sign up for the class package. And you can access that in the link to the description below. A limited number of scholarships are available as well. So if you wanna know how to sign up for one of those scholarships, again, links are in the description below. I have books as well. As you may know, my books that have been out for a while, Prayers to the Sky, and The Body and the Cosmos, both were number one new releases uh, on New Age Astrology on Amazon. Thank you so much for that. And I hope that you continue to appreciate them and love them and value them and cherish them. Thank you to everybody who's left a positive review on either one of these books. I appreciate you guys so much. My next book is The Universe is Wise and Loving. And this is on the nodes of the moon. Advanced copies have been shipped out. People have been getting it. People have been posting it on social media. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for the wonderful feedback that this book has been getting. And it is this book that will launch on August 22nd. However, you can pre-order the ebook version on Amazon. And if you do pre-order, what happens is you go on and Amazon is offering a discount. So the regular price for the ebook version is $9.95. I think Amazon right now has it for like just over $7. So you're already getting a discount there. And when you get that, you would send us the receipt. Amazon doesn't charge you right away. They charge you the day that the book is released and when they send it to you, that's when you get officially charged. But you put your pre-order in, um, you get a receipt that says, hey, you've pre-ordered. Send us that receipt that you've pre-ordered uh, using the contact form on my website. And on the day of launch, August 22nd, uh, we will send you two free gifts valued at $70 altogether. One of the free gifts is a class I did with Synchronicity University looking at the changing of the nodes, which took place earlier this year from the Cancer Capricorn access to the Sagittarius and uh, Gemini access and what that means for each and every sign. I go through each and every sign. I talk about the collective. So you'll get that as a download. You will also get another class that I did that speaks to the ruling planets of the nodes and how to interpret that. It, it takes it even deeper in understanding the nodes. And so you will get those two classes to continue to learn about uh, the nodes in astrology. And of course, this is about my interpretation of the nodes as a symbol of love and wisdom and how the universe wants to align you with that. And it's written, of course, in my style, my encouraging, empowering style and spiritual, mystical style as well. So thank you to all the wonderful feedback. I hope you absolutely love it. And link is in the description below. Pre-order now. On the date of launch on August 22nd, the hard copy will be available, but the hard copy is not available for pre-order. Sorry about that. The ebook version though is link in the description below. I did speak about the Mars retrograde season. I have a special horoscope on YouTube looking at the collective with preview horoscopes and I will link to that below. And in addition, of course, if you want the expanded version of what this Mars retrograde season is gonna mean for you, you can log on to NadiaShaw.com and get the download. And of course, those special horoscopes are available in the superstar space as well. Each one is over 20 minutes long. So I made one for each and every sign. They're each over 20 minutes long. So I really go into detail as to how it is that this Mars retrograde season could speak to you. And you can learn more about that. Links in the description below. Finally, 
you can get my interpretation of your unique birth chart by logging on to Cosmogram, looking at my partnership with the amazing Cosmogram. Um, this is where you can go. You can enter in your birth data and within a few hours, you will be sent a PDF email download. And from there, you will get my interpretation of the planets in your unique birth chart and my interpretation of the different conversations those planets are having. Uh, and so it is by going to Cosmogram that you'll be able to get a sample as well to see what it is that you can expect. Now these uh, reports, a lot of people have been getting them and they've been getting wonderful feedback. And for that, I thank you so much with all my heart. I hope you cherish them forever. This was a labor of love. It took a lot of energy and time uh, to go over those 70, 780, 780 possible combinations. <laughs> That's how much I went through. So it took time to get it all out, to write it all out, to share, but it is done and it is in the world now. And the fact that you guys appreciate it means so much to me. So thank you for that. And link in the description below. One thing I do also want to mention a very special thank you to my sponsor for this episode, my new sponsor, Intention Beads. Now Intention Beads is amazing. The people are amazing there as well. They create um, these uh, talismans and at exact astrological moments, uh, they create these beautiful beads with beautiful designs on them that align with your intention. And so you can learn a lot more about what they do and uh, the unique jewelry and talismans that they create at the link in the description below. I have a necklace of my own. I actually have it in Canada. I cherish it so much. And I purchased that a few years ago. So I was so grateful when they reached out to me and asked to be one of my sponsors. So now here we are. And so if you'd like to learn more about Intention Beads, link in the description below. And thank you. Thank you so much for your love, for your trust, for you being here, for watching. I'm truly so grateful for it. I hope that this very surprising energy this week treats you as gently as possible. But remember, Uranus is about truth. It is about being honest with ourselves. And sometimes that honesty can come about in a way that is shocking, that is surprising. Sometimes those surprises are delightful. Sometimes they're amusing. Sometimes they can be uncomfortable, but regardless, it is honest, it is real. And for that very reason, in and of itself, it should be embraced. And in fact, if we do embrace it, we may find that the shocking factor goes way down and the enlivening, inspiring factor goes way up. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.